In this video we're going to show you how to install LED lighting on wire shelving. Adding lighting directly to the shelving puts the lights between you and what you're looking at. It will give you full illumination of everything on the shelf, allowing you to see what's in there. It also assists when you have situations where you don't have an edge to mount the light on, like a reach-in closet. Framed closets with a door give the option of mounting the lights on the inside edge, illuminating the box. To install 10 meters of light, or approximately 32 feet, in 2017 this is about a $40 to $75 project, including the power supply. The price will vary based on what materials you can find around your house to avoid purchasing some items that are needed for the job. So let's get started. If you're not a drawing person, you can always take a photo of the area where you're thinking of installing lights, print it out, and we're going to draw right on top of it. The first thing we're going to look at is power. Our objective is to deliver 12 volts DC into the closet. You have two choices. One might be to have power in the closet. The next one might be to have power from an adjacent room. If you can find AC power in an adjacent room, attic, or basement, you can put the transformer over there and run the 12 volt DC into the closet to where your switch location will be. For this linen closet I'm working on, there's an AC outlet adjacent to the closet on the right side. I'll be using that as my location for my transformer and be running the 12 volts to the motion sensor I'm going to be installing. So I'm using a motion sensor, but you have to decide what you're going to use in your case. You have several choices here. Motion sensor, door switch of some type, manually activated switch like a dimmer or a rocker switch. I personally like the motion sensors. Uh, they turn on when you're close and they turn off when you leave. Uh, sometimes they're a little temperamental. Worst case scenario, you just wave your arms and things turn right on for you. All of the activation devices I just showed you operate on the 12 volt side of the tr DC transformer. Please be aware if you put a switch on the AC side of the transformer, if you want to dim, you need a magnetic dimmable driver. Running a switch on the AC side of the transformer can cause a 2-3 to three second delay when turning on the lights as you enter the room. Now it's time to pick some lights. Whites come in warm white to cool white. Even if you buy them from the same manufacturer, the waterproof might be a different color from the non-waterproof, and they may have variations in between. You may want to consider buying lights and seeing what they look like. The lights you've been looking at here are generally LE 2835 lights. I like the 2835. It's a very bright chip. It's an 8 millimeter line, so it's very thin, and I can put it in different places. It doesn't draw a lot of power. It's only 2 amps per 5 meters. That means to do two 5 meter runs, I only need 4 amps 12 volts DC to power it. I like to use waterproof strings when possible. That way they can be wiped off and there also has some water resistance. You can see that the waterproof daylight white string that I use is more of a bluish light and the warm white is more of a softer white. Keep in mind that the color of your walls will influence the appearance of the light color. As soon as you get some lights, I recommend you hold them up and see how much light you want to install on each shelf. You can run the lights the entire length of the shelf, and it's actually easier to do that, but it is nicer to tone down and put in just the amount of light you need. It's a little more work, and I'm going to show you uh, both techniques here. So let's get back to finishing our drawing so we can finish calculating how many parts we need. On your drawing, you're going to draw a line from your AC power supply to your switch or motion sensor, whatever you're putting in. In my case, it's up the wall and over to the center where the motion sensor is going to go. Then you're going to draw another line from the motion sensor to the first shelf position closest, closest to the motion sensor that will have lights on it. And then you're going to go down and uh, put a circle on each one of these, and you're going to put a circle on each shelf that's going to be illuminated all the way down the side. Okay, now you're going to take your drawing and you count the number of circles. For each circle, you're going to buy one male barrel connector. And for the power supply connection, you're going to buy at least one female barrel connector. Now, what I would personally do is add two or three of each to that, so you have some extra laying around. Sometimes they are bad. The next thing you need for each circle is you need one uh, female connector, and I normally buy those in pre-made whips. They clip right on the end of the light and you'll be all set with those, uh, very easy to install. Now you need to calculate how much wire management you need. In the case of the linen closet, I only need one piece to go down the right side. I've decided to run my power cable from the power source up through the wall and over the ceiling and down to the center where the motion sensor is. I only have this option because on the back side, there's an air return for the air conditioner and I have access. If you were going to run it from the inside, you would need wire management from the power supply up the wall over to the center of the motion sensor, 
and then from the motion sensor down to the first shelf and then the length of all those shelves down to the bottom shelf number five. I have a video that shows you how to procure the materials for the wire management and how to make it. But you'll also need, in addition to the actual brackets, you'll need double-sided foam tape to go on the back. If you're using a motion sensor, add that to your list. I do have a review on the ones you see here. Please look for that. You'll also need to get your power supply. Make sure you get one with enough amperage for the lights you chose. For a wire, I like to use this 18-2 shielded security wire that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, it's very easy to work with and has a nice ca casing on it. Now you have to find a surface for your wire shelving. You have several options here, but you have to be careful because you could end up spending as much as you did on your lights. So one thing I like to look for is something I could recycle. In my case, I like to use faux window blinds. My neighbor recently threw out a set. That's what's in my linen closet. Uh, the only disadvantage with the, linen with the faux blinds or something other material is you might need a saw to cut them. So if you don't have a table saw, that could be an inconvenience. What I recommend as a backup product is the kick plate lining that they sell at the uh, at the hardware store. This is the kick plate that goes on a screen porch or uh, something like that as reinforcement. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive. It's uh, if you have the taller front end on your wire shelving, it'll fit right in there perfectly. It's under one inch, and if you have the shorter one, uh, you could probably actually zip tie that right through the shorter front end wire as well. Uh, it's a very clean service, gives you nice mounting uh, service on the inside. You can drill a hole just halfway through it and uh, zip tie it and uh, perfectly smooth on the inside if you do it that way. So those are some of your options and then we have these other materials uh, that you could also look at. Get a good supply of 4 inch zip ties for this project. For tools, you'll need scissors, a razor blade. You might need some tin snips if you're using the aluminum. Uh, a soldering iron is optional. I recommend it for certain types of connections and some solder. You'll need some heat shrink. Uh, I always see some uh, wire strippers, some side cutters, uh, very small screwdrivers, maybe some electrical tape, and then a drill and some drill bits. You can either build the wire management on the wall or ahead of time. One thing you want to do is make sure that your surface is prepped. If uh, the wall's not sealed well, the double-sided tape may not stick well. So you can always take it apart and paint it first. I've had to do both. So when you're done prepping the room, uh, you have to pick a technique. So if you want to go ahead and assemble the wire management ahead of time, you can do that. Or you can put the wire manage management on the wall and then put the wires in. Now you're going to go ahead and get your wire management prepared. Once your wire management is prepared, you're going to take your first piece. And you're going to take it into where your shelving is. You're going to hold it about an inch from the bottom of the bottom bracket. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to mark uh, a quarter inch uh, gap, two lines, about an inch above the bottom of each bracket. Now this is where we're going to notch it so the wires can come out for each shelf. Now if you have the smaller brackets, you're going to have to make sure that you notch it probably just below the bend in the bracket so that uh, the wire is hidden, which is the ultimate objective. Now take the side cutters and cut the lines that you just made in the wire management. Flip up the little tab and then cut it off. Make sure you try to be careful not to cut into the bend in the wire management. We are ready to do some wiring. We're going to start by wiring from the bottom to the top. And the bottom wire comes right out the end of the wire management. So you can leave an inch and a half to two inches of trimmed uh, wire coming out the bottom. You're going to run up to the first notch and again run one, to two, one and a half to two inches. You're going to trim that off. You're going to prep the end by taking off the outer insulation. And then we're going to continue right up the line and do all of them that way. When you get to the top, <clears throat> to the top notch or the, the top uh, hole, if that's where you're coming out, uh, there will be no connection beyond that at this point because that's where the power uh, from the power source is going to enter and power all of your shelving. Whether you've done this on or off the wall, when you're done, you'll have this nice complete piece of wire management with the wires coming out of each notch and the ends. If you hadn't already done so, it's time to install the wire management. You're going to, again, line it up about an inch from the uh, bottom of the bottom bracket, and you're going to peel the double-sided tape off, and you're going to stick it on the shelf side of the shelf brackets, starting at the bottom and working your way all the way to the top. It's time to put on the terminations. Now the bottom of the wire management has two wires coming out and all of the notches should have four wires coming out. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to pull all of the wires to the same 
uh, length and then you're going to trim them off to be the same length don't make them too short it'll make your life miserable you can see I'm cutting these about the length uh, of the bracket and uh, there's a little leeway there because that's where your uh, connection uh, will have some service loop hopefully so the next thing you're going to do is uh, trim all those wires 3 sixteenths of an inch back and you're going to go ahead and take all of the uh, red wires and you're going to stick them in the red connector on the uh, the red connection on the jack and you're going to tighten that up nice and snug and then you take all the black wires and you're going to stick them in the black connector on the jack the the black side i find that tends to hold uh, uh the wires need to be just an, a tad shorter in an end state when you're done you want uh, no wires to be exposed on the connection and uh, that'll help prevent shorts we have to go back and do some work on the shelves. It's time to put the uh, facing on the shelf where the LED lights will be mounted. If you're using the aluminum, uh, the aluminum, I recommend you cut it to length and go ahead and drill the holes where you're gonna put the, uh, the zip ties on. It does not take a lot of zip ties like uh, plastic, it's very firm. Uh, do the zip tie holes at the end and one or two in the mid center somewhere depending on the length you're using. If you're using the plastic, uh, you'll need to cut the plastic to length or buy it to length. Uh, the plastic, in this particular case, you'll see I'm uh, putting zip ties in about every eight holes. Uh, you, I'm drilling the holes all the way through. You want to try to offset your holes so you have a nice, clean, smooth surface to mount your LEDs on on the back side. If you're using the really short shelves, um, uh, the new style front end, you may find that uh, you have to just run your lights over zip ties depending on the material you're using. Uh, when you do put uh, zip ties on, I recommend you put one on the end, whether you're using plastic or aluminum, and be sure to wrap the head uh, so it's in the bracket uh, so it doesn't jam when you put it in. Uh, also, uh, when you're putting zip ties on plastic, you have the opportunity to put the head in the back. Um, on the aluminum, if you drilled through just one surface, uh, the head will be in the front. You really won't even notice it if it's white on white. Okay, now we're on to lighting. Uh, first, I'm going to show you how to take uh, silicone off a waterproof LED strip. What you can do is put the strip down on a flat surface, and you're going to score it with a razor blade that's uh, fairly sharp. You want to go about three quarters of the way through. Make sure you don't score all the way down to the metal. Then you're going to uh, take that silicone. You're going to uh, grasp the uh, nearest LED and make sure you don't bend it. And you're going to pinch, hold that taut, and you're going to bend the silicone where you cut it, and you're going to kind of peel it back, exposing the contacts and peel that off and that'll give you a clean contact to either put in a connection or a solder. If you encounter a solder joint in your string and you want to open it up, go ahead and cut the silicone as you did on the end. You're going to score it on both sides of the solder joint and then you're going to peel the silicone off of the joint. Next take a warm iron uh, across the two contacts at once and uh, go ahead and uh, bend it at the break as it heats up to the appropriate temperature. So if you have a pre-made connector you're going to put on the end of the wire, uh, you open the clip and you're, there's a little slot at the bottom there. You're going to stick the wire in the slot, make sure it's in the slot and not above it, and you're going to force it underneath the contacts. Now when you do this, uh, th there's a red and white wire on the uh, connector. You need to make sure that the red is aligned with your positive and the uh, negative is aligned with your negative. Uh, I personally um, like to solder these joints. If, you, if this is a long-term install you're doing, uh, soldering the joint ensures that you will never get corrosion or broken contact or flickering lights and gives you a, a solid joint. Um, and basically you just heat it up a little bit and uh, put a touch of solder on there till it uh, bonds the contact and the other. <laughs> Try not to put too much solder on, you won't be able to close the door very well. Uh, solder is optional. If you're putting LED across the entire length of your shelf, the procedure is really easy. Cut your LEDs to length. Uh, go ahead and find the appropriate end that the connector is going to go on, remove the silicone, put the terminator on, and you are done and ready to install that string. So the linen closet has a 5 foot wide shelf, and I've decided that I don't want full light all the way across. I'm going to put a, a piece of light in front of each door, so it's centered in front of the door. On the top shelf, I'm going to put a half meter of light on each side, and all the ones below I'm going to put just above a quarter meter of light. To do this, I need to fabricate a wire assembly to install on the shelf with the spacing. A solderless way of adding spacing is to buy these corner connectors and use them as spacers. You won't have full control over the distance, but it will give the opportunity to create light spacing without doing the soldering. To make the light assembly, we first need to cut the LED string into the lengths we need. We'll need two pieces of light, 
one piece of cable to go in between the two and then the terminator with the female connector on it to go on the end. With the two pieces of light that we've cut we're going to go ahead and take the silicone off of two ends on one piece and one end on the other piece. When you go ahead and solder you're going to use the uh, one with the single end cleaned off and solder that first. That way you can match it up without uh, having twisted wires with the other piece which uh, allows you to select the correct end that matches the first end you did. It doesn't matter which one's on top, which one's on the bottom, could be positive or negative, but in the end you just want to try to get them in a straight linear line. So when you solder these joints, uh, you do want to use best practices and uh, put a little solder on the end of the wire and a little bit on the contact on the LED wire and then just use the soldering iron to join the two. Now you'll notice here that on the terminator I am using a solder on instead of a clip on. Uh, that's really just because I had some laying around the house. Uh, you'll see me putting on the heat shrink here and I do use a flame. Uh, you don't want to uh, melt it. It's really just to touch the heat shrink and um, melt it really quick. You don't want to melt the LED or heat it up too hot to where it's too hot to touch. Uh, the good news is when you're done here, um, you'll have uh, one complete string uh, and three solder joints. Okay, so I've already run the power wire from my power source up through the wall, and this is a 12 volt line, and it came out near the motion sensor, which I've mounted in the center of the closet. Now, I mounted this one on a swivel. If you want to see how I made that swivel, look at my motion sensor video. So the next thing I have to do is I have to run the out power from the motion sensor uh, to the start of the wire shelving. So in order to do that, uh, I've gone ahead and gone back up into the ceiling in this particular installation and uh, come out over against the wall right above uh, my entry port into the wire shelving. So what I have to do is put the termination on the motion sensor side and then uh, run wire management down to the start of the first shelf. So keep in mind that uh, you know, in some cases, if this was a, a closet with a wall, I would just run this right along the wall inside the closet. It's a closet. I can also use wire management inside the closet to do that. Because this box closet had a, uh, uh, it has no edges on the front, and I can't mount where the sliding door is, uh, this is the option. So ultimately what we're doing is um, we're going to run this wire down, <clears throat> we're going to put wire management in, and uh, terminate this at the... Uh, first wire shelf, which is where we left that open wire on the wire management. So you can see I'm, I can run wire management right up to the bitter end here. And what I'm doing is I'm sizing the wires. There's a lot more stuff hanging here because I got the lights going to show you guys what's going on. Uh, you can see I've already uh, uh, put my first shelf in. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, ultimately, uh, we're going to do the wire management and you're going to stick out the inch and a half. And we're going to put a termination on this just like we did with the rest of the shelves, uh, the shelf terminations. And that first termination, because we daisy chained all these together, is going to power uh, every shelf location. Okay, installing the, the LEDs on this shelf. So we've already done the face that we're going to mount the LEDs on. You can either mount them in the closet or off. If you're doing the entire length of the shelf, uh, you can do it outside the closet. The one thing you need to know is where the, the wire is going to start, where you're going to start applying the LED. So the one thing I recommend is put the shelf in and see what's comfortable in terms of being able to get the wires uh, managed. Usually with the, uh, with the end on it, you can do a, a nice wrap on it if you need to do that. In the case of my linen closet, I used the length of the lead for the offset because my objective was to center the, the light in front of each door. Remember, there's only a section with uh, six lights. So I actually installed them um, in the closet while I was working on it so I didn't uh, mess up the end. And you'll see that I went ahead and uh, I started at the end, I plugged the light in, uh, then I peeled off the, the adhesive on the back of the light, uh, um, stuck the light to the surface, and of course this is after cleaning it all with alcohol. And then uh, I just ran down and did the entire length um, that way. So And then I went back later and I, I uh, uh, cleaned up the wire management, which we'll cover in a minute. So as you go through this, um, you have those options. Uh, if you're doing sections, uh, and you, you can do one in the closet as a template and then do the rest outside the closet, or if you're doing the install in the closet uh, and you didn't take the wire shelving out, this is basically how you do it. Uh, I'm doing it from the underside so I can show you, but you could easily do it from the front as well. So go ahead and uh, run those wires in and get the wire, uh, the LEDs installed on your uh, wire management. 
So if your shelf is going to contain multiple sections of LED, you may have to deal a little bit with those wires running in between the lights. And there's two options there. One is you can just tape them down. Uh, the other is you could drill some more holes and put some more zip ties on. Uh, the, the most frequent uh, cause of LEDs coming off is the weight of the terminator. So uh, having something holding the wires near the terminations is uh, the best thing you can do in preventing uh, uh, wires falling off or LED strings from falling off with, uh, from where you mounted them. So once you have the shelves installed and the lights plugged in, you need to go ahead and secure the wires where at the plug. Uh, just bundle up any extra wire there and put a zip tie on it. So this is the linen closet fully lit. Now I had that offset shelf on the top and I don't have an overhead light so you see I put two strips of light at the top. I wire those directly into the motion sensor because they're up there, but when you're done, uh, as you install your shelves, the, the unit becomes illuminated and it becomes much easier to work. What I've shown you obviously applies to wire shelving mounted to the walls at the edges. A lot of shelving nowadays might be mounted on cantilever brackets. And cantilever brackets, you can use the same technique. You'd run the wire management along the bracket on the wall. There's a space there, it'll fit just fine. And then what I would do is uh, put the terminations on like you normally would and then at the end of the shelf uh, you run a uh, wire up the cantilever and I'd put a connector there uh, so that you can change the length of the wire between the shelf and the plug because that gives you adjustability to move it up and down and obviously uh, in the front you might do sections of lighting or you could still do uh, long strips of lighting as well but you will have to account for the fact that the cantilever uh, does stick through the front of the shelf I have created some other videos uh, about topics we've covered in here, and that includes uh, switches, wire management, LED motion sensors, and power supplies.